it's a box. So why do we need an unboxing video? The internet's half full of them when you go looking for stuff. Maybe they've got a point. This is actually quite a difficult box to get into. It's one of those where you've got to wiggle it, shake it. Give it a squeeze. Try and persuade it. It's coming. Come in. So what we got in here, well, it's a bit obvious really, as it says on the box, but there we go. So now we're in. One of the first things that we see is an instruction booklet. Now, the Rapido ones have got a bit of a name for being useful. It says, read this first. If you don't, lion might bite. And it could do. So first of all, we've got a bit of history of the uh, the model, blah, blah, blah. Not going to read all of that uh, for you, but uh, there we go. It says, unboxing your model. Maybe they should put the leaflet outside the box. So it's, it's lying such a small locomotive, lots of exposed detail. You need to take, take care when removing your model. Remove the sleeve from the clear plastic clamshell, then open the clamshell. Remove the model from the clamshell by gripping it at the centre of the boiler with one hand and using the other to lift the tender clear. Tempting as it might be, do not grab hold of the coupling rods. And that makes sense, actually. Do take note of that. And there are a couple of other fragile bits, as you will see. So there, there's a few more uh, bits and pieces. How to couple the, uh, uh, the tender and the loco together. Uh, another bit about crank screw covers. We'll come to that. A bit about uh, operation. How to fit a decoder. That's actually quite useful. What the sound functions are on uh, their supplied decoder. And we'll come to that a little bit later. A bit about warranty, all the rest of it. So again, they uh, they do want to stand by their product. So it might be a bit light-hearted, but it's all good stuff. So then move on to the next page. This is just mind-blowing. So a couple of different versions of line, and this one is the 1930 condition, uh, as restored by the LMS workshops at, uh, at Crewe. Uh, but you can see how many parts are on there. So it's actually quite a small loco, but yeah, loads to it. A few nice, pretty prototype pictures. So there we go. So now we've read it thoroughly. We can get on with opening it. Take the lid off. Take the a clamshell out. Take the outer clamshell off. It's a bit like one of these Russian dolls. As you get deeper and deeper into it, what's in there is actually smaller and smaller. Whoops. It says, be careful, and I've failed already. So let's hold that tender in whilst we bring it out. Yeah. Get rid of all that packaging. There we have it. It is small, isn't it? Once you've taken it out of the box. The instructions do tell you how to couple the uh, loco and tender together. And this is done by the means of a six pin plug and six pin socket on the uh, the tender. So if you place them down there, I'm avoiding those coupling rods. Uh, bring it together quite gently. Maybe just give the tender a little bit of a lift and a wiggle. And there it's in place and there's a little fall plate cover over stop your crew falling down in between so as i say about uh, a couple of fragile bits and that's principally obviously uh, uh, these from the back head to the top of the uh, the safety valves worth keeping an eye open for aside from that it actually feels quite robust as a product there's plenty of fine detail on there, but it still feels quite robust. So we've got there, uh, obviously, metallic uh, finish to the uh, top of the chimney and a dulled brass effect, obviously, onto the uh, the top of the firebox there. How does it measure up? Grand total, buffers to buffers, 13.4 oh, centimetres. But one of the things that strikes you as you get the, get it out, it feels quite weighty. So let's see how much. The scales now tell us it's 177 grams. 
that's actually a fair amount. So, uh, yeah, uh, a little bit lighter than uh, a typical new uh, uh, 060 tank engine. But it does have sort of like a nice mass to it. And that helps with the uh, the quality feel. As I say, this one is in the uh, 1830s condition with uh, Indian red frames and uh, green paintwork to uh, the splashes, cab sides and tender, but with a nice wooden finish on the uh, the boiler to the, uh, the cladding there. Uh, no, the buffers aren't sprung, but one of the things to actually note with this is on the front, you've just got a cosmetic uh, chain coupling, uh, obviously reflecting how the, uh, the original looked. And at the back, tension lock coupling, do what you like with uh, with that. But, obviously on the uh, the front of the Loco, there is no NEM pocket, so uh, you're not going to be running around tender first with this. A uh, little bit of a shelf queen, but what a lovely thing it actually is. Many 040 Locos have a bit of a waddle to them, and with this being an 042, and quite a short wheelbase obviously i was expecting uh, perhaps the yeah uh, the same from that as the wheelbase is about 24 mil uh we'll pop it on the rolling road and take a look at how it performs this is on dc control uh it's just uh, from a kato train set power so we can see obviously sort of like whirling away uh, quite happily there but a little bit of a waddle but nothing much at all and this rolling road really does show if something is off balance so uh, when it's on the track i don't think i'm going to have any problems there uh, whatsoever really so off into uh, uh, reverse and i noticed that there was one little bit of a tight spot but that's because i didn't run it in did i, I didn't follow the instructions there we start, uh, if we're getting up to uh, uh, max velocity, yeah, that's all going a bit, uh, bit mental and it's even uh, sending the rolling road uh, moving. Putting it onto the uh, the track again on DC control, we can see it's okay at uh, slower speeds, you know, it moves along quite nicely there. A wee bit tight still at this stage, but uh, that'll settle in. Obviously, as we uh, sort of like uh, give it a bit more of a run. Even though I'm still not running it in properly, I couldn't resist sticking a bit of uh, a load behind it and see how it fared. So, I mean, you wouldn't expect it to be doing this, but feather the throttle a little bit, uh, hang some mark ones behind it. And then, oh, look, one of those uh, is uh, derailed, so that's increasing the resistance. There we go, load six. As the instructions tell us that the uh, the tender body does separate, it takes a little bit of persuasion, a little bit of uh, wiggling, but there we go, it's in the blanking plate. Uh, pop that off. So, uh, obviously, it'll reveal underneath the, uh, the next 18 slot. Now, I've got a sound decoder for it, so uh, we're going to pop that in. Now that's going to give us a chance to see how it actually performs on DCC compared to DCC. Now, I don't think I've got that tender top on quite right, but still it's okay. There we go. Pop it back to uh, together, give it a wiggle, get it on there. Then back onto the uh, the rolling road and then we can try it with uh, DCC. So we've tried it out on DC and fitted a decoder now. Let's have a look how it performs uh, once we've got the decoder fitted. It certainly starts off a lot more smoothly as you can see just going up through the uh, speed steps uh, bit by bit it's nice and smooth and it certainly doesn't have any tight spots uh, on this so uh, off we go yeah i've not fitted that tender top properly either but there we go getting up so we'll have a look at some of the uh, sound functions now
Onto the F8, what do we get? Lion's Roar. Lion arrived literally 24 hours too late to actually get the review done for our uh, September issue of BRM. But included in there are a couple of other Rapido products. Yeah, relevant, should we say. So there's the uh, Laureate Y. And why am I holding it down with my finger? Many Rapido uh, wagons are incredibly free rolling. And the other things obviously reviewed in, in uh, September is the a toad a brake fan so what you've got there with stay there stay there just a little bit of imagination is sort of like well two thirds to three quarters of a tipfield thunderbolt set which will be on its way soon <laughs> 